So in order to deliver lifecycle management, right, day zero, day one, day two, you need to go much beyond the AI ops. And give me, I'll give you some examples. You need data coming from the network itself, right? data coming from your systems. As I said, we have to have deep instrumentation in every hardware and software component. Your queues, buffers, your CPU, memory, everything that you have to know uh, that's happening in your hardware. And we, you talked about sensors. We have sensors not just the outside of the systems, like physical Wi-Fi sensors. We also have the third radius. We also have sensors throughout the systems to monitor our hardware components, not just the software components, but even the hardware components, and also monitoring your uh, applications. On top of that, environmental factors, the power fluctuations, voltage fluctuations that I talked about. We do monitor, whether it's fiber or copper, we monitor voltage fluctuations. And we monitor the RF, and the noise, and the utilizations, and the interference. And more importantly, we also monitor what we call contextual. That's a user and device behavior. You know, when you think of a wireless devices, some are stationary devices, some are mobile. We look at stationary devices and collect the data, not just from the our own sensors, but all from as well as the stationary devices. And user associations, we look at historical data I was talking about and use all of this to, you know, to do the RF uh, optimization. On top of that, we also have data coming from the sensors, the physical sensors, as well as third data. So this is where we do monitor. First is primary purpose of the sensors is to make sure from end user perspective, is the network up and running? Do I have the five bar Wi-Fi coverage? Do I have the capacity? That's the primary purpose. On top of that, there are lots of other capabilities because the what uh, AP that's sitting in the ceiling has the different characteristics than where the users are sitting. Our sensors monitor the RF from the, from the sensor perspective and send the RF information, not just coming from the AP, but from the sensor angle. That data is coming in real time to the cloud. So hopefully that answers. So it's not a 5G, it's really the Wi-Fi, and it uh, monitors all the you know, uh, spectrum, across the spectrum, and provides the data. And as we talked about, you know, what uh, uh, Austin showed, we do monitor in infrastructure, we monitor devices, we monitor your application. The reason is we have sensors not only inside, but even in our switches. Monitoring, you don't have to tell us to monitor specifically your DHCP or radios or any of this. As you set up your own DHCP radios, we go ahead and monitor it. We monitor the internet. We monitor top 10 applications. We have deep packet inspection built into it. So we, we, we know what are the top 10 applications for in that location. We monitor those applications. In some cases, if the customer says that, hey, I need this kind of application, you can potentially configure those, as set up those applications as well. The team, Zoom, for example, some of these common apps, like th there will be some kind of like um, visibility into those applications. Uh, with those apps. Kind of yes, apps. perfect. And what's the granularity and kind of timing on this, on this uh, data? Is it like, you know, is it refreshed every minute? Is it something that's you know cached locally, pushed up? Like how 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 granular can I get into it, both from a time uh, aspect and from a uh, granularity on the actual application there? Sure. So Chris, it depends on what we're monitoring. If you're monitoring the network, we monitor multiple times a minute, whether the radios or the RF side of it. If you're monitoring just the availability of the network, that's again multiple times. But if you're talking about applications, if you're talking about internet, that's a couple times a minute. Not, But the information is sent to the cloud after we accumulate certain data. And say, like usually, once a minute, we send that data up to the cloud. We talk about AI. We talk about automation. But we went one step further. You know, like when you think of RF optimization, we know all the algorithms that are there in the internet or in the top vendors. We worked with Stanford. We worked with their AI ML uh, professors as well as the students. And not just the data coming from, you know, if you look at the data, typically the data is collected from the access points. Here we're collecting the data from the, our physical sensors, wireless uh, devices that are stationary, and as well as the user association. We're taking all of the data, constantly making sure not just local optimization, global optimization. Let's say, Ali, you had a bad experience. Doesn't mean I should go and impact everyone else. So we make sure that globally it's better. So what happens is, before we make the change, our softwares, they take the snapshot of every user experience. Once we make the change, is it improving globally across for everyone? Only if it improves, then it continues, otherwise it reverts it. Go ahead. Do you have any capability for specific devices that need precedence. You're in a hospital environment and you need yeah. to tell it like, I don't care, everyone else's user experience can suck, this thing needs to stay online. So what we call LCIM, least capable, most important LCMI, most important devices. So we do uh, understand some of those devices, we work with the customer. We have what we call device fingerprinting and we do have adaptive networking. That is, based on the device, some, capable, some are capable of doing 11 hours, some are not capable of doing 11 hours. Or if you're you know, like you're injecting IVF to a patient, you don't want to change the channels. 
So we do understand the applications that are running in the cloud, running at the time, and make changes only if you have to make changes, and not interrupt the sessions that are real time going on. So there are lots of examples, frankly, on how we use the AI, ML, and automation. But since we are delivering the service, you really don't have to know it. Right? We guarantee the service. We'll be happy to go into more details. But let me give you the uh, rogue access points. You all know that wireless you know, configuring the rogues and making it right is impossible. We deployed it in a customer site, and it's a healthcare. And within 90 seconds, we're able to identify the rogue access point. That's been sitting there for God knows how long. The customer never knew it. For months or years, it's been sitting there. Within 90 seconds, we detect it and contained it. On the wire? On the wire, exactly. And without customer ever configuring anything about the whips and words, it's built into the system. Okay. So software rollouts, quickly. It's an orchestrated software rollout. So we, you do have, as a customer, you can give us a maintenance windows. And we also restricted windows. You know, Some customers are still skeptical of software updates. So you can give us a restricted window so that we don't upgrade during that time. But it's orchestrated. So we know the, how the NILS, NILS service block. And we take each element at a time, make sure that there are no users or real-time applications running on it. And we upgrade that one at a time to make sure that there's no impact to the end users. So there's a lot to cover just on the software upgrade itself. So in the interest of time, I'm going to continue to move forward. Go ahead. Uh, so maintenance windows, obviously, that's that's a big thing. So let's say if you need to do a code upgrade on a switch, like I mean, let's say it's a acting as a layer main core switch or something like that, right? And 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 for a big enterprise, and uh, it's it's a big change, right? That you're right. doing, and it's going to impact like pretty much the whole organization. You will you have is it somebody just remote sitting and just doing that, or yeah. or you, you'll have somebody available like a like a you know a senior engineer available to to actually troubleshoot in case something you know. So let me give you now that you asked me a question, I was hoping to move on. But first of all, we have redundancy built into the network. Mm -hmm. right? What we do is we move away the traffic from that, again, through automatically, so that the traffic is not going through that, because there is a redundancy built in. Right? Okay. And we upgrade the software. When we upgrade the software, there are several things happen. So there's a, is it a manage? We have something called impact of the software upgrade. We know it upfront. Right? We know the impact of the software upgrade. Does it impact the data plane, or management plane, or control plane, or something else? So we minimize the impact that restarting the switch is extra, rarely done. It does happen, but it's rarely done. So you say you're going to move the traffic. So let yeah. me, like, it'll be a resilient network. I mean, let's say there's two switches. So you move it to the standby or whatever you want to call it, or a second switch, and then you Correct. okay, got that's it. right. All right. So that's and then other one is what we do is we first do alpha beta, like just like cloud rolls it out. We first roll it out in fewer customers and make sure everything is working. Then we go to 50 customers. Then we go to hundreds of customers. So you're rolling it out in such a way that you gain the confidence that this thing works.